Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the launch of the International Energy Agency's World Energy Outlook 2012. It's a pleasure for me to introduce our two speakers today. To my left, International Energy Agency Executive Director Maria Vanderhoven, and to her left, International Energy Agency Chief Economist Dr. Fatih Birol. I would also like to recognize the International Energy Agency's Deputy Executive Director Richard Jones, who's seated here in the front row. Thank you. Ms. Vanderhoven will make some introductory remarks, and then Dr. Birol will present the main findings of the World Energy Outlook. At that point, we'll move on to your questions. And now, Ms. Vanderhoven, you have the floor. Thank you, very, thank you very much, Greg. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here today. This is the third time this year that we are launching a report of World Energy Outlook in London. It was the, the golden age, the golden rule for the golden age of gas. And last month, the two of us, we were here for the uh, Iraq, Iraq Energy Outlook. But now, of course, is this uh, Fatih, the main event, huh? That's it. So let me just make some introductory remarks. The global energy system is hugely com complex, constructed of many interconnected parts that pull and push on one another. And all of these changes, all of these changes need to be analyzed and understood together if decisions are to be taken that put the world on track towards a secure, affordable and sustainable energy future. Now, our 2012-12 World Energy Outlook seeks to do just that, taking new developments into account and painting a comprehensive picture of the global energy system now, but of course also in the future. And while the world energy outlook looks forward to 2035, many of the findings resonate with the IEA's medium term reports, which look over the five year time horizon, such as the shifts expected in the refining industry and the rapid growth in China's demand for gas. So what does 2012 World Energy Outlook tells us? In short, dear friends, it tells us that the global energy landscape is changing rapidly and that these changes will recast our expectations about the role of different countries, regions, and fuels over the coming decades. So let me explain some of the reasons why. The World Energy Outlook highlights a resurgence in oil and gas supply in some countries. High prices, new technology are unlocking North America's unconventional oil and gas resources, but the repercussions will be felt globally. A surge in unconventional oil production in the United States has changed its outlook from being pessimistic a few years ago to being quite optimistic today. And we now project that the United States will reclaim its status as the world's largest oil producer for a time, and that, as North America's oil imports needs decline, it will accelerate the switch in direction of international oil trades with an increasing share of Middle East exports going to Asia. In the Middle East, the Middle East is to experience a resurgence of its own with Iraq. And after decades of war and instability, Iraq's oil production is already touching new highs, and it stands as the world's third largest exporter. And we project that it will produce much more in the future, reaching more than 6 million barrels per day in 2020 and more than 8 million barrels per day in 2035. Then the global outlook for natural gas. That continues to be bright, but the regional picture varies. And today, this is seen most clearly in the prices that natural gas commands in different markets. Low gas prices in North America, and they feed through to electricity prices, providing a competitive benefit to domestic industry. But it also frees up coal supplies for export to Europe, pushing down Europe's coal prices and making it more attractive than gas for many, many power generations. Generators. We can see this, for instance, in, in my country, in the Netherlands, where many gas turbines are running at low operating levels. Now, looking forward, we project that global gas demand will grow by around 50% by 2035, and that the price relationships between regional gas markets will strengthen. And there are two reasons for that. Liquefied natural gas trade becomes more fle flexible, and contract terms evolve. 
And this will mean that change in changes in one part of the world are felt more quickly elsewhere. Now, nearly half of the increase in global gas supply between now and 2035 is said to be unconventional gas. But this comes with a note of caution, as the unconventional gas business is still in its formative years and a global boom in production is not assured. That brings me to electricity. And while the World Energy Outlook confirms that global demand for electricity will grow rapidly, the sources of this supply will change in several ways. And there is a need to respond to such decisions as those in Germany, Switzerland, Japan and France to scale back the role of nuclear. That's why the World Energy Outlook's outlook for nuclear is lower than last year, but global output is still expected to grow in absolute terms, and that's driven by expanded generation in China, Korea, India, Russia, and not forget the Gulf states. And countries that do step away from nuclear will need other sources of generation to fill the gap. So there will also be a need to respond to new electricity market developments. And within individual countries and regions, competitive markets are creating stronger links between gas and coal, while at the same time, there is a need for markets to adapt to the increasing role of renewables. Now, the World Energy Outlook focuses on a different fuel each year. And this year, we have chosen for what we call a hidden fuel because you can't sell it, you can't buy it, and you can't put it in your tank. So this year we have a cross-cutting pers perspective by focusing on energy efficiency. Energy efficiency, this hidden fuel. And it's a key option in the hands of policymakers offering cost-effective benefits with regard to energy security, emissions reductions, and a host of other domestic policy objectives. And in the last year, many energy-consuming countries, including China, the United States, the European Union, and Japan, have announced new energy efficiency measures. But despite this, current efforts fall well short of tapping the full potential. Now, this World Energy Outlook maps out in detail how much more potential exists. And that exists if we simply adopt measures that are justified in economic terms. And so by 2035, we can achieve energy savings equivalent to 18% of global energy consumption in 2010. And saving on such a scale reinforces the fact that efficiency in energy use is just as important to our energy future as unconstrained energy supply. And increased action on efficiency can serve as a unifying energy policy that brings multiple benefits. Now, I have touched on a, a range of developments that are shaping and reshaping our energy world. And unfortunately, taking all of these issues into account, the world is still failing to put the global energy system onto a sustainable path. The world's energy needs continue to increase, driven by rising incomes, a growing global population. <coughs> and the huge potential for increased efficiencies, which could slow this growth dramatically, will remain unrealized unless governments act to break down the barriers to that that exist. Fossil fuel subsidies, for instance. Fossil fuel subsidies have increased by almost 30% to 523 billion US dollars globally. And appetite for reform appears to be waning in some countries. And despite the climate imperative, the outlook for our energy system continues to be one dominated by fossil fuels and one where we will fall, where we will fail to keep to a trajectory consistent with a global temperature increase of no more than two degrees Celsius. And that was decided upon. Now, furthermore, while the UN Year of Sustainable Energy for All has had a positive impact, we still live in a world where 1.3 billion of the world's poorest people live without modern energy. So taken together, the analysis within the World Energy Outlook reinforces the simple fact that no country is an energy island. And furthermore, it tells us that in a world where the energy landscape continues to change, our energy policies cannot be set in stone. But now, I would like to thank Fatih 
and his team for their efforts in once again delivering such a comprehensive piece of analysis. And you know, dear friends, sometimes the um, World Energy Outlook is referred to as the um, Energy Bible. But, well, we, we decided we are not going to use that word anymore because it's more like an atlas, isn't it? It's an atlas showing the path we are on and guiding us towards a more efficient, more sustainable energy future. <laughs>